Well, there's a lot to talk about today again. Uh, yesterday was the big sort of, uh, I guess they, the, the umbrella term is the Jericho March, but there was a bunch of names for it. March for Trump. There was, uh, uh, afterwards, there was all the, the fun marching that the Proud Boys did in the streets. And then also you had sort of your, um, Ollie Alexander and Alex Jones crowd, which were not official, well, part of the official event, holding their own stuff going on. Um, lots of chaos. You know, if you guys don't uh, subscribe to uh, Jason Burmis, he's a great guy. Um, you know, been on YouTube longer than I've been politically aware. <laughs> longer than I've been uh, old enough to have opinions on on politics. Um, he was there yesterday. Had a lot of great uh, on the ground stuff, um, and he was. Uh, walking around with the march last night when you had all the drunk guys in the streets and things and um it, it was a very interesting event there was of course some violence and things um not nothing nothing that i would say is um anything worth applauding you know it's not like uh like you had any kyle rittenhouses out there uh, you know, defending private property. Uh, but at the same time, the way that uh, you saw these guys out in the streets last night, they were not full on Antifa either. <laughs> as far as just attacking random people and smashing windows, they weren't, they weren't pulling that crap, but they were, um, they were not conducting themselves in a manner <laughs> in which I would personally or in which I would want to be associated with. So I'll put it that way. And this is not something that should be unexpected. I think uh, the response that most people have um, to seeing, you know, videos of uh, some proud boys uh, harassing, you know, for example, that Antifa couple, um, you know, I think they were acting like a bunch of cowardly hyenas, um, just sort of nipping at these people uh, when they were, you know, shouting at them to run away and then pulling the woman's hair, you know, pushing her on the ground and stuff. You know, that's cowardly. Uh, garbage human stuff, but is it as bad as what Antifa normally does? No. <laughs> it's about on par with the least of what you'd expect from Antifa. And, you know, am I surprised that they are um, stooping close to Antifa's level? No. Because, uh, you know, this this is this has been building for a long time. These guys are pissed off. Um, they're not in a good mood. <laughs> I don't endorse it. Not a good thing. It's sad to see, but it's it's not... Uh, surprising, put it that way. And of course, all the people who defended uh, Antifa's uh, uh, righteous rage uh, in past months, and of course BLM's uh, violence, uh, they're of course uh, condemning all of the, the Trumpy folks uh, from last night. This sort of thing, though, I think it's going to become routine in American cities. Uh, it's not something that's going to go away. Uh, this is only going to intensify. Uh, I think that uh, the the street the, the the low the low boil of the street battles is going to be a constant theme here moving forward, and that'll be true no matter who uh, you know is president after January twentieth. Um, you know this fantasy that if somehow Biden gets in there, that uh, the violence is going away is absurd. I mean BLM started under Obama you know, the black guy. <laughs> so they're, they're not going to disappear under uh, Joe Biden, certainly the oldest and the whitest president in American history. That is, if Joe Biden is able to be president. And I say if, because even though, you know, it's a 99% likelihood at this point, uh, it is possible <laughs> that it's always possible uh, that Joe Biden does not become president. I'm not saying that any, that he's going to get sick with the Wu flu or that he's going to be, um, you know, I don't know, assassinated or something. I'm not saying anything like that. Um, the, the process for the Electoral College, even though the Electoral College is meeting tomorrow and they are going to, you know, assuming that there's not a ton of faithless electors, which I doubt there would be because the elector slates are picked by uh, the parties. You know, it's not like you're going to have these um, a bunch of Democrat electors in Michigan, for example, abstain from the vote and say, no, we can't vote for Joe Biden. So he's, he's, the Electoral College is going to um, pick Joe Biden tomorrow. But then uh, the uh, vice president before a joint session of Congress uh, is going to 
open up the votes and count them, I believe, on what, like January 6th or something. And this is uh, Trump's final Hail Mary uh, attempt, or, or I shouldn't say attempt, because we don't know that they're going to go for it um, at remaining president. Now, Mo Brooks has come out and said he's definitely going to object, because here's the thing, is that um, Congress can object to the certification of the results of the electors um, from, you know, individual states, because the vice president goes through one at a time, reads, you know, the, the, um, the, uh, the votes of each state, and a uh, member of the House and the member of the Senate have to object to, one, to those states, one or more of those states, and then uh, both houses uh, go into, I think, a minimum or a maximum two-hour session to debate the topic, and then they have to come back and vote. And a majority of both houses of Congress have to vote uh, to not certify the results of you know any given state. But since there is a Democrat uh, majority in the House, I see no path to which that could happen. Even if you got all the Republicans on board, um, I don't see how uh, the Democrat House is going to uh, have enough people break away. Um, from the Democrats to vote to overturn uh, the result or not certify the results in uh, one or more states. So to me, that path is not feasible. Now, what would happen if they did that? Let's say they um, uh, these four states that Texas is suing because of that lawsuit getting thrown out or whatever. Uh, let's say Mo Brooks and I don't know Rand Paul or Ron Johnson because those are the two senators who have expressed interest in objecting. Um, let's say that they, you know, they second his objection and that magically somehow the Democrat House votes uh, to not certify the results and so does the Republican Senate, which in and of itself is not a guarantee. Uh, John Cornyn, for example, um, has, you know, expressly said he's against doing that. I'd imagine the same goes for Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski um, and probably many others. But leaving that aside, let's say both houses vote to not uh, certify. Uh, the results in, in one or more states. Well, then the results from those states get thrown out. Uh, as far as the electors go, they don't get counted. And so that will take off of Joe Biden's total. If Joe Biden's total falls below 270, then the House has to vote by state delegation. And that's how Trump would be reelected. And again, I, ju I just don't see that happening. The only thing that could happen is that uh, the vice president, um, who is the president of the Senate, um, he has total control over this process, and he could choose unilaterally, I believe, uh, to throw out the results uh, from one or more states. Now, would Mike Pence do that? I <laughs> I doubt that at this point. I don't think that he would. Um, but the question is, could he? Yes, technically. And people encouraged Al Gore to do that in 2000. People encouraged Al Gore to throw out the results of Florida, just Florida, um, because of the uh, you know, the, the controversy over, you know, that election. Um, and at that point, neither Gore nor Bush would have had um, uh, 270 electoral votes, and it would have gone to the House. They would have voted by state delegation. But in that situation, not even Al Gore did that, um, even though I don't think it would have been unreasonable for him to have done it. It was only one state, and it was a very close thing. He could have said, hey, we're not going to count these results. Let's have the House decide. But he didn't do that. Um, and, well, I guess that's partially because the Republicans controlled the House and he uh, knew that Bush would have won either way, so what's the point? But in Pence's case, since he is a Republican and uh, the House is still controlled by Repub Republicans, you know, it is, it makes more sense for him to do it than Gore. But the personality likes of Mike Pence is such that I have I have trouble believing that he would. But, you know, I mean, he is the vice president under Trump. So, I mean, he's got to agree at least 95% with, you know, everything that Trump believes about this election. And if Mike Pence actually does do that, if Mike Pence does say, hey, these four states that are in dispute, uh, the Texas suit, you know, should have been heard for, you know, for those reasons, I can't certify the, the results from these states. I'm going to throw them out. <laughs> then Biden has below 270, um, and it would go to the, you know, the House would have to vote, and then Trump wins re-election. That would be the most chaotic um, thing imaginable. 
And I have to say, it would be highly entertaining. If Trump won re-election in that way, um, then I think that you know most of your blue states would have no choice but to secede, uh, which would be wonderful. Now, the downside is um, the red states would be stuck with the American flag, so it wouldn't really make sense for everyone to you know whip out their, uh, their rebel flags. So there is an aesthetic disadvantage uh, to having the blue states secede rather than the red states. But other than that, I mean, this is a better scenario for splitting up the country because I think that uh, the Democrats, uh, or rather the left, you know, uh, is so much more fervent at this point than the right even because the right is still trying to catch up to the left in terms of uh, radicalization. Um, that they, I have more faith in them to actually go through with this. Remember what I was saying yesterday about how Texas, or, or was it Friday? Um, this whole thing about Texas and talking about secession, this is something that could happen down the road. I have um, absolutely um, no, um, no doubt that they do not, that they would not do anything in the short term about seceding. California, however, if <laughs> Mike Pence unilaterally throws out the results from these states or whatever, California can say, well, we recognize Joe Biden as president. And uh, we're not going to recognize Trump as president and go into open rebellion. And then a bunch of other states would probably join California. New York, I'd imagine, would be in there. Um, Illinois probably would be in there. And I, I guess it's just my normalcy bias that makes me think this could never happen. Not the U.S. breaking apart thing, but I mean the, uh, the idea that Pence could just throw out certain states. Um, but, you know, I, I say to myself, you know, I mean, gosh, I, I know that these, are that these are crazy times, but I mean, are they that crazy? And I think to myself, you know, well, if there was ever a time when a vice president were to act on this power and to unilaterally um, just deny um, certain states uh, their, you know, their right to vote uh, in the Electoral College, I mean, I'm not trying to make any sort of um, commentary about, you know, oh, he's, he's disenfranchising the, you know, the dead voters. No, what I'm referring to is the, uh, you know, the right of these states uh, to cast their electoral votes. Um, I can't think of a situation in which a vice president has done that. It may have happened once or twice in the past, but not enough in my uh, recollection to, to change the results, uh, you know, the ultimate winner. Um, but I guess, you know, we'll just have to wait and see until then. Um, I have to keep an open mind. I can't say definitively that I know something that which I do not know. But again, either way, though, this pushes us down the road towards decentralization. This, this whole process, no matter who comes out on top, is helping to delegitimize Washington. That's something that's very important. We're reversing uh, the trend uh, of the last, gosh, I mean, really, it's been since the founding of the country, since, or since the ratification of the Constitution uh, back in 1789. Um, power has slowly and but surely uh, been, uh, you know, gravitating towards Washington. Washington has amassed more and more power. Uh, more people have been giving up their rights uh, to DC. And I want that to stop. I want that to change. And the fact, the only way to make that happen is if people, um, no longer trust DC. If they think that it is uh, a totally irredeemable thing, they must lose hope in capturing DC for their cause. And I don't care whether it's the left or the right that loses faith first, uh, because without both sides uh, agreeing to play the game, uh, you know, there is no game. You gotta have, uh, you know, the red shirts and the blue shirts. They have to keep believing that if they just vote harder next time, that all of their dreams will be realized. Uh, when, it, when in reality, the only way to win is to not play the game. So, with that said, if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day, and I'd hate to have you miss one. So, I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.